Hey everyone, um, alright, so I'm just, I want to make a quick video about, or not about, but for, um, beginner, uh, computer programmers. And, uh, really what I want to do, I want to stay in between, uh, five to ten minutes, I want to give my five quick tips, or, I'm pretty sure it's going to be five, but, they're just quick tips, um, for everyone who's starting programming, to kind of get a general sense of what it is, you know? Because I, um, when I started programming, I mean, I only knew about programming when I went to college. And I didn't like the way it was being taught. As in, um, they were teaching you certain computer programming languages, but they weren't teaching you the concept of what programming is in general. So I, I just didn't like that, you know. Um, so my first quick tip, I'm just going to make this short. Um, my first quick tip is this. Um... Don't look at uh, computer programming as um, a set of commands or uh, functions. Look at it as a problem-solving tool. That's all it is. You're just trying to solve a problem, and you have a tool. and it allows you to solve a problem. That's all it is. Look at it as a problem-solving tool. And when you look at it that way, then later on when you know, let's say, five programming languages, then you will be able to choose a specific one out of those five, let's say, to solve a specific problem because different problems require different type of solutions one type of problem needs more speed uh, another problem needs a different type of sorting algorithm and different uh, programming languages have different functions for those you know <clears throat> um, some will work faster some will work slower so once again you just gotta look at it as a problem solving tool um, second thing uh, is that you um, shouldn't mix you should start from one programming language and stick with that if you're just starting out just start with the one program language and stick with that um, and I, w I would personally recommend um, to start from C that's what I did but you can really start from anything you want you can start from visual visual basic you can start from PHP you can start from anything um, and, um, you know, C is just my preference. I think it's good to start from that because it's pretty challenging and, you know, you learn all the basics and all the fundamental uh, stuff, you know, like the pointers and everything else. And it's just good. For me, it was good. Um, for you, it might be better to start from Java. I don't know. But the bottom line is this, that you have to start from um, one programming language and don't incorporate everything else together because that's just going to confuse you. You got to learn the syntax of one programming language and learn all the functions of it and how it works and just get a general sense of um, the whole thing, you know. And I'd say dedicate at least two years, at, le at least one year, but I would say two years um, dedicated to one programming language just so you know it fully or as fully as you possibly can. So, um, once you do that, then you can move on to another program language, and that's what I did. Um, when I moved on to, I think it was PHP, I knew Java, and then I moved to PHP. And um, it took me a month to learn, you know, to um, just get a sense of how it works, and just learn how the functions interact, and how to make the variables, and all that small stuff, you know. The reason is because I already knew the concept of programming. And besides that, I was already comfortable with one programming language. And the thing is that all programming languages, they share a lot of similarities. I mean, there's different syntaxes, there's different functions, and this and that. But uh, most of the stuff is very similar. So once you learn one language, learning another is not that um, difficult. So definitely do that. Um, third is um, please keep your code clean. There's a tendency, when I was starting uh, the program, I, there, there's this tendency to... <clears throat> overcomplicate code because in a way you want to program you want to write a lot of code and you get excited you're like oh I just want to you know, write a lot of code but it's good in a way because that means you know you're passionate about it but what's bad about it is that um, you end up with a spaghetti code and what a spaghetti code is is that it's very difficult to understand at the end when you write a code and you try to come back to it to maintain or you know you want to debug or do whatever else you want with the code it's very difficult to do that so try to keep it um, very clean and by clean I mean um, use you know 
understandable variable names, but don't make them too long. Your function names, once again, don't make them too long. It should be, it should be like this. When you're looking at a page, you shouldn't be s scrolling to the right all the time. So what I mean by that is that it has to be very short. Uh, because the, sometimes you know you have this conditional statement that goes on and on and on and on. You have to break it down. If something is too long, you have to break it down. If something is too complicated, you have to break it down. That's um, rule of thumb. So if you see something is getting way too complicated, you got to break it down. You got to think of another way to do it. Because if it's really that complicated, it's gonna uh, you know come back at you later on when you're trying to debug it or uh, connect it to some other program. Or whatever else you're trying to do so that's one thing and um, so those are three things and uh, hopefully I can remember the rest if not then I'll just you know I'll, I'll just leave it at this but um, one of the other things that I wanted to tell you is that um, um, yes a lot of uh, beginners um, they don't test their code before moving on and what I mean by that is this when you're writing a couple of lines of code, please test it, please debug it, please make sure it works. Because it, here's what happens. You write a code and you think it works and you're confident that it's gonna work because you think that's what you wrote. But the it, there's so many times when you write something and you meant to do something, but actually does something else. And later on you find that out and it takes you so, long and it's a you know it's a tedious process and it is a tedious process because you haven't checked it when you wrote it so every time when you're writing a couple of uh, lines of code just go over it make sure it's uh, right uh, and debug it test it make sure it works okay especially when you're doing a huge project and it has like thousands of line of code and it's just you know at the end imagine if there's like little syntax problem or there's a logical problem it's gonna be very difficult to find later on in the beginning it's very easy so just do that you know try to um write and test write and test write and test with experience it's gonna it's gonna be easier because you won't have to write five or ten lines of code and test it you might you know write um 30 or 40 lines of code and then test that because you're confident that the rest of the code is going to work I mean, because you know it, you have done it so many times. Um, so that's that. And uh, my last, yeah, uh, the f uh, very last tip is this. Um, this is not really for computer, uh, beginner computer programmers. This is really for people who are trying to uh, make a decision whether they should get into programming or not. So here's my advice, okay? If you, this goes beyond the scope of programming, it really relates to life in general but I would say this if you don't love programming don't get into it I'm not trying to be rude I'm not trying to be mean um, I'm just trying to save you money and time really that's all I'm trying to do because uh, a lot of a lot of kids from my college they dropped out the reason being is that they thought that programming they heard from somewhere that uh, computer programming computer engineering brings you a lot of money um, you know, just heard it from somewhere, found it on a forum somewhere, and then they just applied to um, computer um, engineering school. And so um, they, you know, went to the first class and second class, and then uh, all of a sudden they dropped out <laughs> because they, they couldn't handle it. And uh, the reason is because computer programming is not just, you know, it's not in like in the movies, you know, you have a couple of things and you break into the system and get all the money. It's not like that. I mean, it's it's uh, it takes a lot of time to go over a code, to think about the problem, to plan it out, and uh, then write a code and then go over it and make sure the code is clean. I mean, it takes so much patience. It takes so much time. Um, it's overwhelming at times. You have to really, really love it. You have to really love not programming, but problem solving in general. You have to love it in order to enjoy programming, in order to... Um, get a job and not get sick of it after like 40 years you know and be able to constantly develop and that's only gonna happen if you love it and as I said it goes for anything I mean you can't really become um, you know an architect and you have to love it I mean there's so much uh, to it you know 
And uh, I mean, if you if you don't love it, then why would you get into it? Money shouldn't be your um, first reason. You know, it shouldn't be the incentive. So, don't um, don't do that. And uh, I know I was gonna say I was, I, I know I was gonna give you five tips, but uh, my last one really I think is really important um, is the uh, planning. Okay, um, planning when you when you read a problem, don't just jump into writing the code. It's not right. I mean, it's always it's always gonna fail you, and you're always gonna ma get mad at the end. I've done that. None. It's not good. Uh, when you're reading a problem, try to understand the requirement. I know it sounds very cliche, but you know that's it, this is true. You have to do this. You have to read the. Um, when you get to the problem, uh, try to understand the requirements, what it wants. Uh, try to draw a chart, um, and uh, try to see the data flow where one thing goes, and where it ends up, and how does it change. You know, try to connect stuff. Try to see it in your mind. Try to plan it out. See it very, very clearly. Once you have the solution in your mind, you know exactly how to solve it, then proceed uh, to programming it. Because if you don't do that, it's going to go back to the um, messy code, you know, because you're going to like, be solving it as you're writing it. And that's not good. You're kind of winging it. And that's not good. It's not planned. You have to plan it first. And because when it's planned, then you'll have a much clearer code, much organized code, and it'll work. Um, and that's really the most important thing, okay? So that's all I wanted to tell you. Um, uh, this is really my first video, so um, I'm going to be doing much more. Um, I'll have different types of videos, uh, which um, is going to be, you know, uh, programming related. Uh, uh, some of them are going to be tutorials, some of them are going to be educational, some are just going to be like this, you know, me talking about certain experience that I had. Um, or uh, about programming jobs or anything else, you know. And um, if you have any ideas, definitely suggest. I'm open to uh, new ideas. And um, um, I have a lot more stuff on my website, so please check it out. And um, please stay tuned for my next videos. Thank you.